So, we're mixing up the trigonometric derivatives with the chain rule. You can also mix them up with the product rule, the quotient rule. If um, you open up to 14G, I think it was, was what I asked you to have a look at yesterday. Let's have a look at a couple of these. 14G. Because we didn't really have time to actually look at any of those questions. Let's have a look at, say, where's one I wanted? Yeah, let's have a look at, say, 3J. Do you see 3J? This is exercise 14G. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, it's the prelim book. Um, 14G, 3J says y equals sine x on 1 plus cos x. Is that right? Did I remember that right? Yeah, that's 3J. Okay. So here's your u and here's your v, just like a normal quotient. So when I launch into the derivative, v u dash minus u v dash. Okay, let's see. So I'm just going to put down v, 1 plus cos x. What's u dash in this case? It's on the board. Come on, you can all call it out to me. I know it's early, but it's like literally on the board. Look carefully. Uh, u in this case is sine x. So u dash will be cos x. That's it. It's really easy to get these all mixed up because of how much they all look similar. Okay? So there's my v u dash. What does quotient rule have on the numerator? It's a minus, very good, negative. Um, and then I've got u v dash. So here's u. What's v dash here? Now, be careful. Again, so many little tiny traps to fall into. Cos x differentiates to negative sine x, right? So, negative sine x, like so. And then on my denominator, there's v, so 1 plus cos x, there's v squared. Okay? Now, clearly I can work with this and I can simplify this quite a bit. And so all your knowledge of trigonometric identities and even just expanding your algebra is going to need to come into play here, right? So what's my numerator going to become? I can simplify this to a fair bit, right? Expand some brackets for me. What am I going to get? I'm going to get a cos first and then I'm going to get a cos squared. Over here I have a plus sine squared. Very good. And hopefully that's, that's ringing some bells for you. All divided by 1 plus cos x, all squared. Watch out where your brackets are. One of the, things that, one of the pieces of feedback that came from the markers in your AP3 was that sometimes we just forget brackets. And clearly this is different to what I wrote on the previous line, right? So don't take shortcuts on that. Um, I can simplify this, and that would, be, that would totally be a mark. Like, I'm looking for this to be something that you recognize, right? Because have a look at what happens. That's 1. Let me write it around in a way that's a little more helpful so you can see it, right? All divided by 1 plus cos x squared. Now, we have to be more careful with these things now that they are trigonometric objects because uh, there are all kinds of pieces of trigonometric knowledge which are sort of assumed in here that you have to be careful for. For example, if you saw something like this, 5 over 30, right? You would not skip a heartbeat to say that's 1 out of 6, right? You're like, common factors, no big deal. There are common factors here too. I can cancel some, what will I end up with? 1 over 1 plus cos x. But you should hold on for a second, right? Because these things here are not just numbers like, say, uh, 5, right? 1 plus cos x is variable, right? What you've really done is you've divided by 1 plus cos x on 1 plus cos x. Can you always divide by things? There is, there's a particular number that you can't just divide by because you create problems if you divide by that number. It's only a single number in the whole universe that causes problems. It gives you things like vertical asymptotes when you try to divide by it. You can't divide by zero, right? Can 1 plus cos x ever be zero? 1 plus cos x, whoops. Can it be zero? And the answer is it totally can, right? In fact, not only can it be zero, it's zero an infinite number of times, right? So in this case, you kind of get out of the woods, you're sort of lucky, because if you think about this, what are the solutions? Hmm. There's where it is. By the way, 
I'm in calculus mode. Oh, I forgot to mention this yesterday. I said this is all in radians. The very first graph we did was in radians, right? We said, oops, pi, 2 pi. Why can't this be in degrees? I think I maybe did mention it. Why can't this be in degrees? Go back to your working yesterday. Go back to where we, you might hear, you might you just, just remembered, well done. Go back to your working, we were playing around with some limits. Do you remember that? We were working with limits, we were doing first principles, and at a certain point, I think we had something like this. Do you remember this guy? Do you remember that? Yeah. Now, we did something fancy with that. We looked and we saw, oh, that's a mess. But I can say that it's equal to something simple, namely one, but only if I'm in radians, right? So therefore, this has to be in radians. The second you said I'm differentiating, or later on, if you're integrating, you know it's in radians. Um, when is cos x equal to negative one? Well, I think, Erin, I heard you say it. It's pi. There it is. So x can't equal pi. If x were equal to pi in this case, then you're dividing by zero, divided by zero. That's a big problem, right? So in fact, I'm going to have to say that x can't equal pi, um, or 3 pi, or 5 pi for that matter. We'll come back to that in a bit more detail later. The reason I said before that you get a bit lucky here is that there's still a 1 plus cos x there. Okay, so it's like, oh, I still know that this is true from what's left behind. But if it got cancelled out, that 1 plus cos x, for example, sorry, this is becoming a bit of a mess. If you had something like this, hmm. Hmm, that's a bad example. If you had something like this, and you did the same thing, right? You're like, oh, I can cancel, right? I can cancel, you just get one over 10, which I guess we could write as cot, okay? Can you see now, on this line here, I've lost some information, right? I no longer realize, from this line alone, that x can't equal pi. But that was built into the original question, I got rid of it. That was kind of a call that I made, right? So, it's still true that x can't equal pi, it's just that it's no longer implied in this line. So you have to be careful. Just differentiating trigonometric functions is more than just, cool, I have new rules to use. You actually have to think a little more carefully, okay?